Well, there are three diseases, uh, malaria, tuberculosis, and HIV, that kill over six million uh, people a year, uh, most of them in the developing countries in uh, Africa. There is not much research uh, to develop vaccines against uh, these diseases because the people who suffer they cannot pay for this vaccine. So um, um, international organizations like the World Health Organization and private foundations, especially the Gates Foundation, have been willing to provide the funds to develop vaccines for these diseases. Uh, the issue uh, that uh, my PhD student Jason Sue and myself have been devoting ourselves is to study what is the best way of providing funds so that uh, pharmaceutical companies engage in this type of research and development. Uh, in the literature, there are two ways of, of uh, subsidizing, promoting research and development in cases where it's not uh, profitable for the companies to do it on their own. One, one type of uh, method would be what we call push programs, which subsidize the cost of research and development. Uh, the, the, the amounts of money required to develop a successful um, vaccine or uh, any other pharmaceutical product is of the order of a billion dollars and the average time it takes is about 10 years. So taking this into account, uh, the, the funds required are very substantial. So one way, the push programs subsidize this cost they provide a certain proportion of the expenses that the company would be doing. The second type of uh, subsidy program would be to subsidize the revenues at the end. Let the company put their own funds in developing these products, but at the end a, a commit to a large uh, quantity at a certain price, that's why they are called quantity uh, price commitments, that they will be, uh, uh, that the sponsor, the agency, the Gates Foundation or the World Health Organization would be willing to buy uh, uh, this. So in these two procedures, the company will have the funds necessary to engage in this uh, R&D development. Um, the literature so far does not provide a, an analytical framework to compare these two alternatives. Uh, it only gives the advantages and disadvantages of each one of them uh, uh, as uh, the, the main disadvantage of the push programs, that is to subsidize the cost of research, is that uh, there are agency problems. There are asymmetric information between the sponsor and the company, so the sponsor can never be sure in reality, in practice, where the funds are being spent, where all the funds are being spent in the, in the particular research that is being promoted or in some other activities of the company. The main disadvantage of the second method, the, pu the push program, the pull programs, I'm sorry, uh, is that uh, you have contracting issues. Since uh, it takes a long period of time, 10 years to develop the vaccine, the, the, the a sponsor has to agree to start buying 10 years from now from the company and the company then has the, the problem to whether uh, the sponsor will be there in 10 years, whether it can commit to, to, to the large uh, um, uh, commitments of funds. Um, what we do in this uh, research is we develop a model of valuation of R&D uh, investments which allows us to deal with this program, the problem in an analytical way, allows us to, 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 to uh, uh, determine uh, what is the best way to uh, 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 provide the funds. And uh, uh, we have a very sophisticated model with many variables that includes the efficacy of the vaccine, the, the cost of investments, all of these are, are uh, random variables that are uncertain, you know, versus uncertainty, eh, 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 and many others. And then we allow the company, the pharmaceutical company, to eh, optimize eh, eh, among these variables in this and decide when is the right time to invest and stop investing if the product is not successful. R&D projects 
are not only very expensive and they take a long time to, to accomplish, but the failure rate is incredibly high. There are some estimates that uh, over 80% of the R&D pro projects in the pharmaceutical industry that enter the clinical trials, those are trials with humans, uh, fail. So only 20% succeeds. And that means that uh, the risk for the pharmaceutical company is very high. And they have to decide when they are along an R&D project when to abandon a project. Uh, we conclude that uh, uh, in general, the uh, uh, pool programs, those that uh, uh, fix a, a certain amount to be bought and fix a price are better from a social point of view in terms of the uh, amount of vaccines provided, um, the quality of the vaccines, uh, and other variables that we have in, in, in the model. Uh, moreover, uh, uh, by analyzing a kind of contract that uh, was not in the literature, what we call a hybrid contract, which uh, um, is a mixture of the two, where you provide uh, some money for um, um, initial uh, research and development, but at the same time you uh, provide for a, a, a quantity, price, purchase commitment at the end, turn out to be the most effective ones. And uh, we, uh, in a, along our, pro our project, we have been in touch with the Gates Foundation because they have been interested in what we are doing. And clearly one of the challenges uh, to apply this technology in practice, which is the stage we are in now, is to get the data that is required for the model. And the Gates Foundation has been giving us data so that we could actually get uh, numbers which can be applied in practice. Uh, this is really, a, I'm a finance professor, this is really a, a project that is more than finance, it's really uh, economics, uh, health economics or policy. Uh, but the techniques that we use to solve this problem, which is called real options, is a technique that was developed in the finance area.